Hello everybody and welcome to God's Big Story on today, Thursday the 18th of March. Before we go any further, let's light our worship candle. And we do this in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now, I'm hoping that you can cast your mind back to last week's God's Big Story, and in fact, possibly over the last three weeks, because we've been focusing on um, a very important person in God's Big Story, and that is actually the section of God's Big Story that we're focusing on, people of God. Can you remember who that person is? That's right, it's Moses. And we were introduced to Moses uh, a few weeks ago and we discussed and delved into the story of how Moses was left in um, that basket on the River Nile by his mother and picked up by um, the Pharaoh's daughter and looked after. Now, last week we moved the story on and we were at the point in the story where God was talking to Moses through a burning bush. Now, if you can't remember or you missed out on that story, watch carefully because I'm going to show you an animation right now. And I want you to think about what God is uh, trying to tell us and trying to show us as Christians and the lessons that we can take from this story, because I'm going to ask you to do a very small task after you've watched it. Watch carefully. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses. Hey Moses was an Israelite boy born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? The Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians. But God had a special plan for Moses. Oh, eh? And he spent his childhood in the palace of the Pharaoh. You see, when Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh-oh. Pharaoh found out what Moses had done, and he tried to have Moses killed. Ah! So Moses ran away from Egypt. He stopped in the land of Midian. Ah. And seven sisters came to the well to give water to their father's flock. Some shepherds came to drive them away. Yeah, you. But Moses stood up for the women. Hey. Now these sisters were the daughters of the Midianite priest named Jethro. When Jethro heard what Moses did for his daughters, he sent for Moses. So Moses came to live among the Midianites, and he married Zipporah, one of Jethro's daughters. Huh? Meanwhile, back in Egypt, the old pharaoh died, but he was replaced by a new pharaoh <laughs> who continued to treat the Israelites poorly. Ah oh, man! The Israelites cried out to God because of the terrible things that the pharaoh made them do. God heard these people and knew it was time to act. One day, Moses was tending Jethro's flock when an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses through a burning bush that would not burn up. Whoa. Moses stopped to look at the bush, and he heard the voice of God say, Moses, Moses. Hello? God then told Moses how sad he was because of the suffering of his people. He told Moses that he wanted to do something about it, and he wanted Moses to be the one to do it. Oh, man. But Moses did not think he was the right person to go. God said, I will be with you. Uh, 
morning. But Moses said that he wouldn't know the right thing to say to the people. So God said to tell the people that God himself had sent him and promised Moses that his plan would be fulfilled through Moses. But Moses still said to God that he did not think the people would believe him. So God said, what is that in your head? Oh. Moses said, a staff. God told Moses to throw it on the ground. Wow, okay. Then God told Moses to catch it. God showed Moses another sign. Huh? And told him to show these signs to the people if they did not believe what he said. Moses still didn't think he would have the right words to say. But God said that he himself was the one who made a man's mouth and gave him the ability to speak, so there was no need to worry. Yet even after all this, Moses said, God, please send someone else. Then God got mad at Moses Oops. and said that he would send Moses' brother Aaron to speak for Moses. So Moses went back to his father-in-law and told him that he needed to go back to Egypt. Moses and his family started their journey back to Egypt. And Moses carried the staff of God in his hand, for this staff would be the tool God would use to demonstrate his awesome power to the Israelites and to the Egyptians. Hope you enjoyed that story again. Now, whenever I read that story in the Bible or whenever I hear um, a version of it or watch something like you've just watched, I always think of um, that really tough task that God gave to Moses. It certainly wasn't easy and Moses certainly didn't want to do it. And it always gets me to thinking of the tough tasks that were given in life and things that we find difficult. Because in Moses' case, God didn't just say, here's your task, Moses, now get on with it. He said, here's this task and here's the help that I'm going to give you in order to do the task. I'm going to guide you through it. Okay. And it gets me to thinking, well, what tough tasks do I face and what, which tough tasks have I faced in the past and what, what sort of help have I received from the people around me in order to do it and I can think of lots of different examples um, for example working during lockdown where we when as teachers and staff in school we recorded lessons and we had to overcome those technical issues um, recording lessons and putting them together and, and uploading them to dojo and lots of staff who were more experienced than me in school really helped me out and gave me some tips on how to overcome that tough task. And that was great. I, I received the support and I'm really grateful for that. Much like Moses received God's support with that tough task of going back into Egypt. What I'd like you to think about today is a tough task that you have faced um, recently and the support and the help and the guidance that you may have received to overcome that. Now it might be something at home, it might be something in school, you may have received help from a family member or from a teacher in school, a member of staff in school or maybe even God himself. You may have looked in the Bible and received some help through what you've read. In your God's Big Story worship book what I've done is I've printed out some speech bubbles um, that you can write down what your tough task was and the support that you've received okay um, and your teacher may want to help you to write those your teacher may write those for you just a few examples to stick in God's Big Story worship book or you may want to do one yourself and your teacher can stick them in to your God's Big Story worship book and if you can put the title um, Moses and the Burning Bush at the top of the page that would be fantastic so we know exactly where we are in our God's Big Story worship. Okay, so just to go over that task again, what I'd like you to do is have a discussion in class, you can pause the video in a moment, and then write down the tough assignment 
of a tough task that you um, were given or faced with and the help that you received to overcome that, just like the help that Moses received from God um, when he was given that task at the burning bush. So pause the video now and have a go at that and press play once you've done that. Okay, so thank you for completing that task. I can't wait to see what you have come up with in your God's Big Story worship book. Let's finish our worship today by praying and let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you so much for joining me for today's God's Big Story Worship. I will see you on the same day next week. Until then, bye-bye.